During the morning of Wednesday, November the 29th, 1950, the college was honoured by a visit from His Excellency the Governor-General, Sir Bernard Freiburg, VC, and the Lady Freiburg. The Vice-Regal Party was played up the drive by the pipe band and were then welcomed by the Chairman of the Board, the Reverend S.C. Francis, and the Rector, Mr. L.W. Stewart. and then inspect the Guard of, uh, Guard of Honour and the band. After the Governor-General had inspected the Guard of Honour and the band, members of the official party were presented. These were Mrs. Francis, Mrs. Stewart, Mr. F. N. Lawrence, Vice Chairman of the Board, the Reverend J. H. Baird, Moderator of the Christchurch Presbytery, the Reverend D. F. McKenzie, Acting Chaplain to the College, Mr. D. C. Wilson, President of the Old Boys Association, Mr. E. F. Scott, President of the Te Parent Teachers Association, Mr. G. A. M. Hilson, the bursar, and Mr. A. G. Gillies, the first assistant. After greeting official guests, the Mount Thaddeus and Lady Freiburg is presented with a bouquet from three small pupils. Views of pupils and visitors are seen, and the Governor-General speaking. In his address, Sir Bernard congratulated the Guard of Honour and the band on their smartness and bearing on parade, and said it had been a pleasure to he and his wife to come to the college. There followed an impressive drum major's display by the pipe band, and at the Governor-General's request, they played a hundred pipers in front of the dais. Members of the teaching staff were then presented and also Mr. H. L. Bowker.
There followed an inspection in the new laboratories. The vice regal party then departed, their car moving down the drive lined on both sides with boys of the college, the pipe band leading the way to the tune of the St Andrews College March. And so comes to an end a very memorable visit. <coughs> In 1952, more than a thousand purpose, uh, persons gathered at the college for the laying of the foundation stone of the War Memorial Chapel by the founder of the college, the Reverend A.T. Thompson, M.A. B.D. The ceremony was held in perfect weather on the site of the new chapel, which is beyond the Strown Stream and adjacent to Normans Road. The area had previously been cleared of young trees by an energetic band of old and present pupils. At the appointed hour, the official party, headed by the teaching staff in full academic dress, followed by the Board of Governors and principal speakers, moved off across the side lawn, across a temporary bridge erected for the occasion by Mr. W. Goss, and up the bank to the official platform. A scripture lesson was read by Mr. Trevor Wilson, President of the Old Boys Association, and prayer was offered by the Right Reverend James Baird, moderator of the Presbyterian Church of New Zealand. The choir sang the anthem, Let Us Now Praise Famous Men. Mr. J.K. McAlpine, MP, represented the government. Speakers shown in order are the Reverend S.C. Francis, Chairman of the Board, Mr. Mr. Donald Wilson, Chairman of the Memorial Committee. Director, Mr. L. W. Stewart. And the Reverend A. T. Thompson, founder of the college. In his address, prior to laying the stone, the Reverend Thompson said, I am thankful to God who has spared me to see this day, the greatest in the history of St. Andrew's College, and also to the Board of Governors for the honour they have done me in inviting me to lay this foundation stone. After the mallet had been presented to Mr. Thompson by the architect, Mr. R. C. Monroe, and a prayer of invocation had been offered by the chaplain of the college, the Reverend M. W. Wilson. Mr. Thompson declared the stone well and truly laid. Close-up views are shown of the stone. And also a piece of stone from St Andrews University, Scotland, which was later incorporated into the building. General views of the congregation are seen. Then a close-up of the Reverend M. W. Wilson.
The procession moves back across Stern Stream. And the picture is taken on the bridge of the Reverend Francis, the Reverend Baird, Mr. Stewart, and the Reverend A.T. Thompson. Wednesday morning, March the 1st, 1954, the school assembled on the site for the turning of the first sod by the rector, Mr. L. W. Stewart. Morning prayers were conducted by the chaplain, Reverend M. W. Wilson, after which the chairman of the Board of Governors, the Reverend S. D. Francis, gave a short address in which he stressed the importance of good foundations in human lives. The rector then turned the first sod and said that this was a day for the school to remember. He was glad that we were about to see erected a worthy memorial to our fallen old boys. In this film, we see first of all a view of Strohan, followed by the procession of staff, board members and guests to the chapel site. stream and the St Andrews College Chapel was dedicated on March the 27th 1955 and its beautiful setting beside stone stream enhances the simple and dignified lines of the building incorporated in the chapel is the shrine in which rests the roll of honor, a book beautifully lettered and designed, and containing the names of fallen old boys and members of staff, together with a complete list of all who served. Dedication day was a sharp autumn day with many trees framing the chapel with autumn colorings. Distinguished guests included the Prime Minister, Right Honorable S.G. Holland and Mrs. Holland, the Honorable J.K. McAlpine and Mrs. McAlpine, the Mayor of Christchurch, Mr. R. M. McFarlane, MP, and Mrs. McFarlane, representatives of the armed forces and the relatives of all deceased old boys. The chapel was dedicated by the moderator of the General Assembly, the Right Reverend D. N. McDiarmid, MBE, BA, and the shrine by the Reverend A. T. Thompson, MA, BD. The order of service included a procession of the school choir, staff, board of governors, presbytery and other ministers, and the moderator to the door of the chapel,
to the door of the chapel where a ceremony of handing over the keys was performed. During the service, the chapel was dedicated and following the dedication of the building itself, the Reverend Thompson and others moved down the aisle and the shrine was dedicated. The fate in 1954 through St Andrew's Collegiate. The fate in 1954 through St Andrew's Collegium of 1954 has this to say of the fate. On Friday and Saturday, March the 5th and 6th, the grounds were crowded until a late hour with visitors to a monster fate organised by the Bertha. Mr. G. A. M. Hilton, in his dual capacity as Secretary of the Old Boys and Parent Teacher Association, to raise funds for the erection of hobby rooms and other much needed improvements. The official party was piped to the dais and briefly introduced by the Reverend Stuart Francis, Chairman of the Board. Speakers were the Rector, Mr. L. W. Stewart, the Mayor of Spicechurch, Mr. R. N. McFarlane, MP, who declared the fate open, and to Mr. J. K. McAlpine, MP, who deputised to the Prime Minister, Mr. Holland. At the conclusion of the ceremony, His Worship presented to the pipe band a set of silver-mounted bagpipes from the City of Christchurch in recognition of their willingness to help in any worthy cause. Pipe Major E.B.L. Hilton accepted these on behalf of the band 
and the plate of selection on them. The net profits from the fete realised just over £3,500 and it was estimated that about 5,000 people had attended. Work was immediately begun on three new hobby rooms for the Camera Club, Radio Club and Model Aero Club. Also on a kitchenette at the rear of the hall and on a third brick classroom to complete a fine new three unit block for the preparatory school. This film depicts the pipe band escorting the mayor, Mr. R. M. McFarlane MP, up the drive, and he is shown being introduced to staff and board members. The official party is then piped to a dais where the Reverend Francis, Mr. L. W. Stewart, Mr. McFarlane, and Mr. McAlpine speak in that order. The presentation of pipes is then shown. The guests and a number of notables connected with the college are then arrested and taken before Mr. Justice Thompson for sentence. The Manifin Parade brings out very vividly the charms of the male participants. Then follow general views of the fete with its stalls, sideshows, sheep tossing, pony rides and model trains. <laughs>
1958. Fate, the fourth to be held in the college's history, is sponsored by the Parents Teachers Association and organised by Mr. G.A.M. Hilton, assisted by Miss C. Varco and Messrs. C.H. Warner and the C. McCormick. The main executive was under the chairmanship of Mr. W.A. Goss, President of the Parent Teachers Association. The fete was held in March and was opened by the Deputy Mayor of Christchurch, Mr. G. Manning. It ran for two days in fine weather and some 5,800 persons attended. The result of the effort was a sum in excess of 5,000 pounds. The profits were used for a variety of amenities round the college. The film you are watching uh, depicts the pipe band escorting the mayor, Mr. Manning, the chairman of the board, the Reverend Stuart Francis, the rector, Mr. L. W. Stewart, Stewart, the president of the parent teachers, Mr. W. A. Goss, and other official guests to the dais for the opening ceremony. After a general view of the crowd is shown, Mr. Manning declares the fate open, and the Messrs. Manning, Francis and Stewart are promptly seized and taken before Mr. Justice Thompson. We could well put a question mark after the Justice. Are shown of the following extraction. Comprehensive coverage is then given of the fate itself, with views of the miniature railway, The display of gymnasts by the girl pupils of Mr. Bucket. The various stalls and the sideshows.
The film concludes with a picture of Mr. G.A.M. Pilsen in conversation with a friend.